Have you ever had the issue where your computer seems to shut down every once in a while and you're not really sure why? You happen to wander into the event viewer and you come across the code called event ID 41, a kernel power error. Well, we're gonna talk about how I resolved my issue with it today. Here's what's been going on. Over the last week, I've noticed that my computer will randomly just shut down. Now, not frequently, but just every once in a while. At first, I, did, I figured it was just something going on with my overclock, so I went and checked my settings, left it alone, came back, went into Event Viewer, which I'm gonna show you here in just a moment. And in Event Viewer, I kept noticing these error codes and then a couple critical error codes. The main error code was uh, coming up as event ID, uh, kernel power, uh, it was a system error. And what a kernel power code is, um, which I'm gonna show you here for a second here, kernel power is uh, basically saying that the system is rebooted without cleanly shutting down first, and that this error could be caused if the system stopped responding, crashed, or lost power unexpectedly. What is a Windows 10 error event ID 41 kernel power? It's, what is it? It's not a Windows issue, first off. It's, that's a good thing. It's actually something that's usually a hardware or a power input issue. If you need to fix the Windows 10 uh, event ID 41 kernel power code, there's a few things that you can do to look at. Um, to address this, all right? First, you wanna check all your power cables. Check everything into the motherboard, check your supp uh, power supply, check your GPU, check your, uh, just check your, your cables in general. There's, potentially there could be something wrong that's just a loose connection could be causing a problem. You could swap out your power supply. If you have a surge protector on it, remove the surge protector from the, to the unit uh, and to see if maybe that's causing the problem. If you're using a, um, a, a UPS, you could remove that and see if that's causing a problem. There are potential points of power failure that could cause a power loss to your compu computer. If your computer's overclocked, start fresh. Maybe there's something weird that happened. You can, maybe your stability is no longer the way it was. Like in my situation, mine was caused from a BIOS update. It was pretty simple for me to fix mine in the end, but there could have been a lot of things that have led up to that in the end that maybe I wouldn't have looked for. So reset your overclock. See how it runs at stock settings for a period of time. If things run fine, then you, then you can probably narrow it down to your overclock. Restart there. Uh, check your fuses. I know it sounds simple, it sounds kind of out there, but you never know. Maybe you've got something going on with your circuit breaker in your house. I mean, worst case scenario, at least you know that you're flying there. The last resort would be your power supply itself. Swap it out. If that alone solves a problem, then it probably answers your question that, hey, you've got a bad power supply, at which point you can contact the manufacturer and see what type of warranty is remaining on it. Uh, EVGA has really long warranties. Corsair has really long warranties. Most of them are five to 10 years now, which are awesome. Now there are <clears throat> several potential reasons for something like this to happen. The worst case scenario is your power supply fails and that can happen. Um, however, in this case, I didn't believe it to be. Not because the power supply ha I have on this computer is the Corsair AXI, or I'm sorry, yeah, the AX1200i. Uh, from Corsair, which is a fantastic power supply, no pun intended there, uh, but because I have not had any issues with it leading up to this, I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary sh or strange. I monitor the um, power supplied from the, uh, the power supply through the software called IQ, or you can do it through Corsair Link as well. And I haven't noticed anything that seems strange to me. I mean, any errors of any type that would lead me to believe that specifically I got an issue with my power supply. Uh, not to say that something couldn't happen and suddenly it just fails. Um, but I started thinking about like, what did I do a week ago that could have caused an issue? Well, there was a couple of things. One, I did do a, 
an actual uh, update, uh, or I'm sorry, a fresh uh, wipe and install of my uh, Windows system software. Um, I had some other issues that had happened when I was trying to learn how to fix uh, the newest issues with Asus Aura, which I'll go over in, in a different video as to some new suggested uh, repairs that uh, aren't quite addressed in my uh, original video. Um, but through that, I had to reset my software. And then there was another issue where um, with importing video from the iPhone 11 Pro that for some reason, Adobe didn't seem to be reading it correctly. So I figured eh, maybe there's something weird going on. So I did that. The other thing I did do was I actually updated my BIOS for my motherboard, my Maximus 11 formula. I had it on a BIOS that was from last spring. And I didn't think about the fact that I recently updated my BIOS. And in that, whenever you update BIOSes, BIOSes, I'm not really sure what you call it um, for the plural. Whenever you update your BIOS, there are things that change. Now, the reason I updated it is it said there were system enhancements and stability um, or system performances and st stability enhancements. So it's, it's a good idea to check that every once in a while. I did have a, uh, another copy of my older BIOS, but I decided, you know, let's just roll with this newer one. So some of the main changes I noticed was within um, the BIOS itself, and I'll show you that here in a second. Um, the um, CPU load that you could allow it to go up to uh, used to be 170%. Now it stopped at 140%. That could have created a challenge for an issue with my stability on my overclock. My previous overclock was set at 1.295 voltage uh, volt on the core uh, and at a five gigahertz uh, all core overclock and it was always stable. I never had an issue. Didn't have these event codes come up at all. However, um, after this change, it seemed like something changed. So I went back into the BIOS and I simply corrected or changed my uh, voltage from 1.295 to 1.30 and checked it. And I noticed I only had one error over a period of 24 hours or one critical, whereas the previously I had three in. I was like, well, there's just something going on. So then I changed it to 1.305 volts uh, on the CPU core. Now, that since then, have I, I've had zero critical errors. I've actually had no errors at all. So that leads back to the situation of, in my scenario, what could have caused the problem, or what did cause the problem most likely, is the fact that I wasn't getting enough voltage or power to my CPU for the overclock. There are several things that people can try to solve this problem. Again, because I had just updated my BIOS, I wanted to test the theory on the overclock. Was it truly stable? Now, I had run Prime 95 for, I want to say it was like 45 minutes. Not a problem. Ran several Cinebench, ran other benchmarks, real bench. I didn't have a problem with anything, but occasionally the system would shut down. So, this is how I happen to fix this one. Now, one thing I did check, I uh, wanted to come across here, was that before I figured out entirely, I wanted to know, okay, what is going on? So I have the AX1200i power supply, and I am using the Corsair IQ for monitoring as well as Corsair Link. Now, I don't need them both, but I do have them both, uh, just in the event, let's say one's being buggy and I just wanna check it. So you go in here and I have my uh, graph obviously for my fans, um, but I went into my graph itself and I wanted to find out, okay, how are, what's going on with my power? Now this right here is for my fan. So it's, I have it set on a fan curve. So when the thing heats up, obviously heat kills computer components. Um, so it tells me my RPMs based upon the approximate temperature. But what I, one thing I do like to watch here is, okay, what is my power in? and my power out. It's pretty consistent. So I'm not getting a massive spike saying, okay, I'm completely losing power regularly, okay? My 12 volt line is consistent. My five volt line is consistent, my 3.3. My efficiency is kind of floating all over the place, but it is around 95% on average, 
Okay, and this is for a one hour graph. I could change it to, you know, a one day graph. So this will show me since I booted it up early this morning to now. So I, I, this is what I like to use to kind of monitor. I'm going, okay, well something else could be going on. So this is the point I started thinking about, about what have I done? So um, changing my overclocking values alone is what resolved this. I know it sounds crazy, but up to this point, I can comfortably say it's been resolved because I did re uh, reset my stuff last night. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go into um, BIOS here. I'll show you some of the things that I noticed that had changed, and then we'll come back and wrap this up. So when I had booted up or loaded the new BIOS um, and updated to, oh, whatever this is now, uh, BIOS version 1302, and I believe it was on 1105 previously. I'd have to look that up, but approximately anyway. Came in, it's, I set everything, everything seemed normal. I initially set it exactly to what I had before, which was sync all cores. My core limit was at 50, so I had a, a five gigahertz um, overclock. Um, I had my timings max out, my cache set at 46. Um, and this was originally at 1.295 because that's where it was previously stable. Now, where I noticed things, when I got into um, here, right off the bat, I noticed that there was a difference in the current CPU current capability, which is interesting because what was happening is I used to be able to have this at 170%. This, for whatever reason, is capped at one, uh, 140. And back when the board originally launched, uh, this and the extreme would cap at 200%. So they keep pulling that down. Now, obviously, they got the reasons for doing so. But I am wondering if that's part of the reason for the uh, instability at the 1.295 that I was occasionally experiencing. And again, at the 1.30. <clears throat> or if it's a combination of other factors when you have the BIOS update. Maybe I shouldn't have updated my BIOS. Everything was running perfectly. I just did so because I had skipped a version of a BIOS update that was there for enhanced uh, and increased stability, enhanced performance. Uh, so two in a row. So I went ahead and said, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um, could I go back and reinstall the old BIOS? Yes, I could. But I'm sure there are reasons that I'm not aware of at this point as to why this is a better option. Now my temperatures are great. I mean. Right off the bat, at idle, you can see my CPU overclocked is at 33 degrees Celsius. In my room, uh, my uh, office in here is at 32 to 30 degrees uh, Celsius as it is. It's warm. I've got three computers in here running right now. The temperature in the room is warm. So my CPU can't be cooler than ambient temperature. So right now, the uh, everything is you know working as intended. I wanted to show this because these settings, while everything could be exactly the same, may not function um, the same as a previous BIOS does because of underlying fashion or underlying issues that they may have quote unquote addressed in the BIOS repair. Point of today's video was to simply show an issue that I was having and some of the steps I took to, in my situation, find what I believe the issue was and to resolve it. It might not always be that simple. If you're running a machine that isn't overclocked, well, then that won't be a situation that you'd be looking at. You wouldn't be able to simply reset your overclock and see if that resolves the issue. Um, if you've done things such as a BIOS update, that can, solve, uh, that can cause a problem for you. Conversely, not doing BIOS updates, let's say you're on an original BIOS when the motherboard was shipped and now you've had this motherboard for two years and there are all of these changes that were written uh, software-wise around a BIOS of a more current version and ASUS is brutal for this. I mean, they're notorious for having things like Aura requiring a newer BIOS, otherwise it won't work right. That's an example of another reason why I would update my BIOS. Not updating your BIOS can cause 
power issues such as this. Loose cables, like we've already talked about. Worst case scenario, a bad power supply, or I guess even worse than that would be faulty circuits in your home, but let's assume that that's not the case. Uh, still, this was a just a simple troubleshooting video to show you how I solved the problem on my machine for the event ID code 41. Uh, I have been working on trying to correct my audio. I've received a lot of feedback, which by the way, I really appreciate feedback that I get. I'm working at, the, at this, this is new, this is fun for me. I'm not an expert uh, editor. I don't have high quality microphone and recording equipment. I use a GoPro and my iPhone 11 Pro now. I use a very entry level lavalier mic. It's from Samson. It was a hundred and some odd dollars for the full setup. So I'm using low quality equipment to do all of this stuff. So I'm trying to learn how to do the corrections and improvements in Premiere, which is how I do my editing. Uh, I tried using LumaFusion because on iPad, that's awesome, but I couldn't get some of the uh, denoising. There isn't a denoise feature on LumaFusion, not that I found anyway, and that's frustrating for me. So came back to the, the uh, Premiere Pro. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to correct my audio. I've got feedback that people are saying my music's too loud. My mic uh, on my voice is too soft. The mix is horrible. Uh, there's too much noise in the background. So I am trying to address those. If you have feedback like that, please leave it for me. If you've noticed an improvement in something, please let me know, that does help. Uh, if I've changed something that works good or doesn't work, let me know that. And if you have advice as to how I can fix something, like some technical knowledge, example would be working in LumaFusion. Uh, I would appreciate that feedback. I'd like to learn how to do these things better. Anyway, I hope today's video was good. Uh, if it was, please hit that thumbs up button for me. You know, that uh, means a lot. If you didn't like it, you know what else to do. Hopefully it's not that. Uh, hit that subscribe button for me, that does help the channel grow. And uh, I hope you have a good week. We will see you next. Bye.